ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದಾಯ ವಿಶ್ವೋತ್ಪತ್ತಿ ಹೇತವ ತಾಪತ್ರಯ ವಿಶಾಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಯಂನು ಜನ್ಮಾಧ್ಯಸ್ಯತೋನ್ವಯಾಧಿತರಸ್ತಶ್ಚಾರ್ತೇಷ್ವಿಸ್ವರಾ ತೇನೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಹೃದಾಯಿಕವೇ ಮುಹ್ಯಂತಿ ಯತ್ಸೂರಯ ತೇಜೋ ವಾರಿ ಮೃದಾಂ ಯಥಾ ವಿನಿಮಯೋ ಯತ್ರ ಸರ್ಗೋ ಮೃಷಾ ಧಾಮನಾ ಸ್ವೇನ ಸದಾ ನಿರಸ್ತಕುಹಕ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಪರಂ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಧರ್ಮ ಪ್ರೋಜಿತ ಕೈತವ್ ಕೈಟವೋತ್ರ ಪರಮೋ ನಿರ್ಮತ್ಸರ ವೇದ್ಯ ವಾಸ್ತವಮತ್ರ ವಸ್ತು ಶಿವದ ತಾಪತ್ರಯೋನ್ಮೂಲನ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ಭಾಗವತೆ ಮಹಾಮುನಿ ಕಂ ವಾ ಪರೇರೀಶ್ವರ ಸದ್ಯೋ ಹೃದ್ಯವೃದ್ಯತೆತ್ರಕೃತಿ ಶುಶ್ರೂಷು ಬೀಸ್ತಕ್ಷಣ we invoke toughness and evoke hope Hariyom and greetings from Niagara Falls. One of the characters that we've met in Bhagavatam thus far is Bali. Bali is a sign of bala, which means strength, physical strength, mental strength. The bali that we have come to learn about is commonly known as mahabali everyone's in sync with me mahabali <coughs> is strong physically and mentally yet bhagwan vamana is bigger is the biggest when bhagwan vamana takes three steps covering mahabalis earth and heaven and finally ego how this relates to our lives these three steps are to be steps into our states we're always living in three states the waking state like some of you are living in right now the dream state like most of you are living in right now and the sleep state like some of some of you <laughs> are living in right now when we invite bhagwan vamana the one who's brahat which means brahman into these states that is the fulfillment of our lives 
this great Mahabali became even greater by giving these three states to Bhagan Vamana in a simpler way, what I'm trying to share. If you give a little bit to Bhagavan, Bhagavan will give you lots. Mahabali agreed to three small steps of Bhagavan Vamanas and Bhagavan gave him lots. And if you give lots, Bhagavan will give you infinity. Give your body, give your mind, give your intellect. By doing so, we will finally give our ego. We chanted this last night as we celebrated Deepavali. Tana, mana, dhana, sabkucha, tera. My body, my mind, that which I feel brings me happiness, I give that all to you. For I know that the only happiness I will experience is when I give myself to you. Our course is using jnana to develop bhakti. Vedanta in Bhagavata. Last week, we came to know why Bhagavan Krishna is called Damodara. How his mother, Sri Yashoda, surrendered Dvaita, surrendered separation. And this is shown by her laughing at herself and how Bhagavan Krishna allows himself to be tied around his waist. We also explored, and I'm going to rechant this verse. Vrindavanam govardhanam yamuna pulanani cha vikshasid uttama priti rama madhava yor nirpaha rama madhava yor nirpa. Everyone felt that Gokula was cursed, and so they all shifted to Vrindavana. This reminds me of a certain country's elections and a certain country's immigration website crashing when election results were submitted. I'm not really sure which countries those are or which <laughs> websites those are, but I'm told that this happened. <laughs> I tried hard for us to come to the kata portion of Govardhana today, because today people are celebrating Govardhana Puja, but I would have had to move too fast. And I wanted this to be slow release joy. <laughs> As this shift, <coughs> shift happened from Gokula to Vrindavana, we were introduced to another asura, vatsa asura, who is a symbol for attachment. This is a vice I feel all of us struggle with, attachment. Here are three eyes. you know I love alliteration, to help us be free from attachment. First I, enjoy. <laughs> I never said this would be grammatically correct. <laughs> enjoy. The more you're enjoying your own evolution, the less you project completion outside of you. Those who are extroverts are the most attached. Those who are inward looking are the least attached. Number two, 
This is to integrate. When you live your life for a higher person, a higher purpose, you naturally stop holding on to that which is lower. When you're integrated to the higher, it's as if you disintegrate from the lower, but always remember the lower is included in the higher. If I pay federal tax, <laughs> if, <laughs> That's also shared with all of the provinces, correct? I'm serving the higher, the lower is included. Integrate. When you love some, that's called attachment. When you love all, that's called detachment. And your third eye is insight. Insight. So enjoy integrate insight when we are attached we don't think objectively we don't speak objectively we don't act objectively in other words we make the wrong decisions we express the wrong emotions agreed and the more i know that the more i know i will care more i will help more when I'm practicing being detached, have this insight of the damage that attachment causes. I really appreciate the symbolism of these asuras. Otherwise, we treat this as a balavehar play. Yes, this is a grade four curriculum I'm teaching you right now. <laughs> and though some of us, our maturity is like that, at least we can be exposed <laughs> to that which is deeper, the Vedanta. We continue. The 10th Skanda, the 11th Adhyaya, the 58th Shloka. 10, 11, 58. Rishi Shuka continues to share with Raja Parikshita the Leela of Bhagavan Krishna. <clears throat> Iti Nandatayo Gopaha Krishna Rama Katamuda Kurvanto Rama Manascha Navindan Bhava Vedanam Iti Thus, as Sri Nanda and his family and friends remembered and spoke about the kata, the stories, the happenings of Krishna and Rama, that is Sri Krishna and Balarama, kurvanto ramamanascha na vindan bhava vedanam, all of the struggles they were going through. And put yourself in that position. They've had to shift an entire community to another place because their kids are in danger. What a great struggle to be in. I've never felt that my kids have been in danger from an outside force. Only Sheila and themselves. <laughs> but never from an outside force. <laughs> I can imagine how stressful or anxiety inducing that would be. But when they thought about Bhagavan Krishna and Bhagavan Balarama, they just smiled. They enjoyed. What were they discussing? They were discussing how so many asuras have tried to come and kill baby Krishna, but those asuras themselves have died. What a wonder. They were discussing how Rishi Garga, when he named Bhagavan Krishna as Krishna, had said, no one will touch him. He will touch all. And how those words are coming true. 
they're all in Vrindavana and they're getting older. So one day, all of these Gopas, Bhagavan Krishna, Balarama, these boys that look after all of these cows, they're all in the forest and they all have their lunch pails. They're going to eat lunch in the forest. And after lunch, they were feeling thirsty. So they went by some water that was close. And as the cows were drinking and they were drinking, there was this immense crane. Crane, and don't think of this mechanically. Why would there be a crane in Vrindavana? They were building high-rise buildings there. <laughs> a stork, a bird. And this was Baka Asura. Baka Asura. This is the next Asura we're meeting. And what this Asura did was swallowed Bhagavan Krishna. If you've ever seen a crane, they look like they're unmoving, but they're fast when they swallow up a fish. And so this Baka did the same to Bhagavan Krishna. And when Balarama and all of these boys saw that Bhagavan Krishna was not there anymore, they felt like they died. They all started feeling dizzy and, and fainted. And then all of a sudden, they saw that this crane was as if burping. You know, when you eat too much and small burps come out and they just keep on coming out. <laughs> so that's what was happening to this crane. But as this crane was opening its mouth, smoke was coming out. More and more smoke was coming out because Bhagavan Krishna had turned his body into fire. Have you all seen The Incredibles? You know that baby in The Incredibles, how he's able to turn his body into fire? That was copied from this Baka Asura narration. So when <coughs> Bhagavan Krishna turned his body into fire, this Baka coughed him out. And he was even more angry. So he started pecking at Bhagavan Krishna. And with one attack, Bhagavan Krishna grabbed both of those beaks and split that bird like one splits a piece of grass. And all of those boys were in wonder at this Bhagavan Krishna. That's some of the kata. Now let's move over to the Vedanta. You tell me, what do you feel baka symbolizes? What vice? Ego. <laughs> Shady. <laughs> Greed. <clears throat> Hypocrisy. Baka is the icon for hypocrisy. How many of you feel you are more than one third hypocritical? More than one third. Okay. Here's how you know. These are gauges of hypocrisy. When we are hypocritical, at the action level, we feel tired. If you generally feel tired, and I'm not talking about physiological reasons, it's, this is because our actions are not integrated. At a speech level, when you feel sick, again, not physiologically, when I tell you something that's not true, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> We've been studying for years and now I'm telling you when I tell you something that's not true. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> if I happen to say something that's not true, then you feel sick about it. You know, in society, people say, I'm sick and tired of you or I'm sick and tired of that. I feel the experience is you're first tired, then you get sick. 
and at an intellectual level, you feel confused. So at a physical level, tired, at a mental level, and I associated that with words, you become sick. At an intellectual level, you become confused. You don't know what reality is anymore, correct? Those are signs of hypocrisy. Now, what are we supposed to do? I'll give you a high strategy and then a more relative strategy. The higher strategy is transparency. When you live in a transparent way, that is the antidote to hypocrisy. We live such secretive lives, yes? And I don't even mean in a Hollywood way, in our regular affairs. And why I'm sharing that's a higher strategy, because we are then denying that Bhagavan is omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent, isn't it? I lied to Sudeshana, and I lied to Diksha, and I lied to Bhaman, and nobody knows that I did. That means I feel that God lives in heaven, and he never heard me. Yes. See how we all believe that Bhagavan is omnipresent, yet that faith is not there. Live transparently. It is simpler that way. This is an advantage of actually living the public life is because you can't do anything wrong, <laughs> even though so many are doing wrong things and they get caught. But it is encouraging of not doing wrong things. Yes. And here is a more relative way to destroy this asura. Internal validation. Internal validation. As long as we seek validation externally, we will be untrue to ourselves. We will be unnatural. But if you're not looking for external validation, you will be true to yourself. You will be natural. Yes? This is much more relatable, isn't it? If I tell all of us, we don't live transparent lives, you don't like that. But if I say that we're living lives for external validation, that's equally dislikable, but we can relate to that. Internal validation, and a point here is, no one is ever <coughs> going to be able to externally validate you, ever. So why even use that as a measurement? All of these boys were most happy when Bhagavan Krishna defeated Baka Asura. And this chapter is concluded with these boys, one of their favorite pastimes was to act like monkeys. <laughs> the details that are given and awesome details, they used to climb trees and swing from branches to branches. Now what do five-year-olds do? Play not Call of Duty, but Minecraft, etc., etc., etc. We'll meet one more asura. The tenth <coughs> skanda, the twelfth adhyaya, the forty-third shloka, ten, twelve, forty-three. This is Raja Parikshita sharing with Rishi Shuka. Usually it's the other way around. This is being reversed. Vayam dhanyata ma loke guropi kshatra bandhavaha yatpi bamo muhustatvataha punyam krishna katamritam. Raja Parikshita shares with Rishi Shuka. I am the most bhagya, the most lucky. In the whole world, he says loka. Why? Guropi kshatra bandavaha, though I am an ordinary kshatriya. 
And please try to relate to this. We're such ordinary seekers. Still, referring to Rishi Shuka, you are my friend. You are my guru. And yad pibamo muhustattvataha. And what do I get to do? Again and again and again, I get tattva. I get to drink the truth. Punyam Krishna katamritam. And what is this drinking of truth like? What is it made out of? The kata of Bhagavan Krishna. And I wanted to share this shloka because this is us. You know that show people like on Netflix, This Is Us. <laughs> this is a much more powerful <laughs> relation to This Is Us. For years, we've been drinking the kata of Bhagavan Krishna. Some more of their leela. One morning, Bhagavan Krishna decides that he wants to eat lunch in the woods. So they have ordinary pastures, but this time he wants to eat in the woods. So he wakes up early and starts to move in that direction. And like a magnet, all of the other gopas, they wake up with him. So there's a huge commotion in the village. When these kids wake up, they're banging drums and throwing things. It's like our home. <laughs> This is like Vrindavana minus all the joy. <laughs> Just the noise. Our kids wake up at 5.15 also with crying and nature's calls and, <laughs> and so on. <laughs> and then all of their parents wake up and their mothers and their fathers are happy. Their kids are waking up early. So they dress them up. They tie their hair and they put a tilak on them. Remember you saw Bhagavan Rama yesterday? <laughs> they all have their man buns. And as they go to the woods, what they used to do with each other is they used to steal each other's ornaments. Like I would take your necklace and you would take my lunch and they would play monkey in the middle with each other. You'd throw it to one boy and to another boy. Often Bhagavan Krishna, he would move ahead of them he would walk faster, he would jog. And all of these other boys would make it a competition to see who can catch up with him first to touch him. Everyone loved being close and, and touching Bhagavan Krishna. And like I said about them acting like monkeys, they love to act like all animals. They used to jump in the water and act like frogs to scare the frogs. <laughs> So lovely to hear these details about how they were just kids. All that we describe philosophically, like forgiving and living in the present, they lived like that naturally. And I'll tell you why very shortly. First, let's meet our next asura. And I feel I'm saying this too positively, like here's our next guest. <laughs> we just met Baka. Now we're going to meet Agha. Can you all show me what an Agha looks like? Yes, an Agha is a python. Not a cobra, not a viper, because those are thinner and faster. A python is huge and slower. So as these boys are being kids, they're goofing around. This Agha Asura was so jealous of them. So what he did was he came near them and opened his mouth into this huge cave-like area. So big that nobody noticed that this was actually a creature. And all of those boys and all of those cows the number given is like a thousand cows. They just meandered into this cave because that's what kids do. Everywhere they're not supposed to go, they go. And as soon as they came into this python's mouth, 
there is so much of poison and heat that just that air had destroyed all of those cows and those kids. Other than Bhagavan Krishna. Bhagavan Krishna knew this was Agha Asura, that Kamsa had sent him. So looking around at this cave, Bhagavan Krishna thought, this Agha is so big, I want to play this game too. And so he started growing himself and growing himself very much like Hanumanji and Surasa. And he became so big that this python couldn't breathe anymore. And Bhagavan Krishna grew so big that he burst through that python. And finally, when that fresh air flowed over those boys and those cows, they came back to life. And so this is how Agha Asura is destroyed. Now tell me, what does this Asura symbolize? See, this is like Wheel of Fortune, R, S, T, L, N, M, E. You know, those are given. So put in ego, put in arrogance, put in greed. Sin, S, I, N. The word aga does mean python. It also means sin. Which is why in chapter 15 of Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan Krishna calls Prince Arjuna anagha. You're not a python, Arjuna. <laughs> You're the one who is sinless. So some insights into this. Just like a python destroys its food by choking it, so too sin chokes our happiness. And particularly sin is an expression of selfishness and makes us more selfish. Remember in Meaningful Mornings, I said the greatest weight on our lives is selfishness. The same is being shared here visually. We can all understand this. We want to know how do we come out of this? Number one, start to act for those that are not you. Selfishness is when you act for yourself. So start to act for that which is not you, family, community, etc. Initially, this will be forced, but once you feel the lightness of nishkama karma, selfless responsibilities, this will become natural. Just start. It's almost like encouraging someone, force yourself to volunteer. Once you start to enjoy this, this will become your lifestyle. This is one way to destroy agha and one more. Be honest with yourself through a cost-benefit analysis. When you are living in a sinful way. What are the costs? What are the benefits? When you're not living in a selfish way, what are the costs? What are the benefits? Living in a selfish way, there are only costs. Living in a selfless way, there are only benefits. Everyone agrees. So don't be swallowed. Putana, Shakata, Trinavarta, Vatsa, Baka, Agha. These are the asuras that have come on to our show. This is a unique show where Vedanta ends all of these, <laughs> all of these visitors. Now, if it's too hard to remember what all of this means and all of these strategies, a detail which Guruji Swami Tejo Mayananda had shared. If you nurture 
and establish Bhagavan Krishna in your heart, he will kill all of these asuras for you. You can attack one at a time or you bring in Bhagavan Vamana who's bigger than anything else that is big, whether that's attachment, hypocrisy, nurture and establish Bhagavan Krishna. Oh.